Today we're diving into a feeling that most of us have experienced while in a relationship or have been on the receiving end of it from a partner. Jealousy. Not fun. You know that feeling when your heart skips a beat, so you're looking at your partner and they're a little too chummy, giggling a little bit too much, a little too close to someone else? At its core, jealousy is a complex mix of emotions, anger, anxiety, insecurity, fear. It could be just a fleeting thought, a moment, or it can gnaw at you all day. It could cause everyone anxiety, the person feeling it and the person on the receiving end trying to deal with the accusations and all the drama. But here's the thing. Jealousy does not make you a bad person. It just makes you a human being. It's natural human response. What matters is how we understand it and how we choose to deal with it. If left unchecked, jealousy leads to mistrust, resentment, misunderstanding, and lots of fights. But why do we feel this way? And more importantly, how can we stop it from degrading our relationships? At the core of jealousy often lies fear of abandonment. It's that tiny voice on the back of our head that's questioning what if they leave me for someone else? But where does this fear come from? I offer you 10 reasons why someone may feel fear of abandonment. Number 10 is something few ever consider, but it's one of the most important ones. Then I will tell you what can be done about jealousy. A lot, actually. So stick around to find out. Number one, early childhood experiences. Let's take a step back and imagine you are a kid again. Maybe you had a parent who wasn't always there when you needed them. Or maybe someone you love just left without warning. Experiencing the loss of a parent, whether through death, divorce, or prolonged absence, can install a deep-seated fear that loved ones will leave. Whoever loves us, leaves us. These experiences plant the seeds of the, that deep fear in our minds, making us think that anyone we love will eventually leave us. Let's get a little psychological here. So according to attachment theory, the way we connected with our primary caregivers as kids influences how we relate to others as adults. If you experienced inconsistent care, ambivalent parenting, or felt emotionally neglected, nobody was paying attention to you, you might develop an anxious attachment style. This means you might constantly worry about your partner leaving you, even if there's no real reason to think they would. These early experiences shape the way we view relationships as adults. Even if your current partner is, is amazing, the old fear in your brain creeps in and muddies the water. Number two past relationship experiences. Individuals who have been cheated on or betrayed in previous relationships develop a heightened fear of abandonment. The pain and betrayal of infidelity makes it difficult for them to trust future partners, leading to anxiety and fear that they will be left again. If someone has experienced an unexpected breakup, particularly if they were deeply invested in the relationship and didn't see it coming, it leads, creates a fear of being blindsided once again. So they're always feeling like they're stepping on eggshells in relationships and that triggers the anxiety and triggers jealousy. Um, they makes them overly cautious and makes them clingy in future relationships. Three, 
low self-esteem and insecurity so people with low self-esteem and insecurity struggle to believe that they're deserving of love and affection and this make them makes them constantly fearful that their partner will find someone better and leave them and that triggers their jealousy uh, so they're super alert to what their partner is doing and who their partner is paying attention to they may view themselves as unworthy and that leads to the anxiety of being abandoned or it could lead to attempting to control their partners telling them what they can and can't do limiting what they can and can't do number four negative core beliefs some people hold negative core beliefs about relationships such as people always leave or everyone cheats if they get a chance so they come with predetermined expectations of their partner leaving and betraying them um, they look at because of these predetermined expectations they start looking for proof anticipating anxiously it's called cognitive bias only noticing information that supports their theory their hypothesis not theory <laughs> Number five, imbalance in commitment levels. In relationships, when one partner feels like uh, the other is not as invested in the relationships as they are, um, the, the person anticipates a breakup. They think that since the other partner doesn't care as much, they'll probably leave. Uh, this may seem obvious until you consider that people are not always objective and we tend to overestimate what we do for others and underestimate what they do for us in return. So it's possible to be in a relationship where one partner is never happy with the other and blame them for not being committed enough. It is also possible that one of the partners really is not committed as much as the other is and it's more ambivalent and not prioritizing the relationship. So that's definitely going to trigger fear of abandonment and jealousy from it, from the partner who feels like this is not fair. Number six, fear of loneliness. Some individuals fear being alone which exacerbates their fear of abandonment. They can't stomach the idea of not having a partner, making them cling more tightly to the relationship, even if they're unhealthy, and predisposing them to feeling kind of like inevitably feeling jealousy because they don't want to lose their partner. But it's all coming, the fear of abandonment is coming from the fear of loneliness. They don't want to be alone. They just can't be alone. Number seven, cultural and social influences. So cultural narratives and media representations always, usually, often reinforce the fear of abandonment by, by portraying love as fragile or conditional stories of unfaithfulness, sudden breakups, or the idea that love has an expiration date influences people's fears and expectations. But that's where the drama on TV usually is. And people love watching drama on TV, not realizing they're getting programmed. Their beliefs about relationships are getting programmed by the drama on TV. Number eight, perception of scarcity. In some cases, people fear that love, affection, and attention are scarce resources. So they fear when their partner pays attention to someone else, like they wouldn't be able to give them the same or more or as much as they need of attention and affection and love. They also may believe that if they lose this partner, no one else will want them. So there's like a limited amount of people out there. And if I lose this person, I'll never get another one. Um, 
This goes with the low self-esteem bit and the fear of loneliness. Number nine, comparison to others. Those who frequently compare themselves to others and feel inadequate may fear that their partner will eventually leave them for someone who they perceive as more attractive, more successful, more interesting. So social media plays a big role in this as people show off and make themselves and their lives look much better than they really are. So when individuals compare themselves or their relationships to the Q-rated images on social media, it exacerbates their feeling of inadequacy. If they believe that they must be perfect to be loved, that can drive people to compare themselves to others who they perceive are closer to that idea of perfection. And this again makes them fear that they're not good enough and anticipate that their partner will sooner or later wise up and leave them. And the moment you've been waiting for, number 10. But before I tell you what that is and tell you what you can do about jealousy, your own or your partner's, if um, you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up, the like button, and extra gratitude if you also subscribe. Let's feed the algorithm what it needs to show this video to other people who may benefit from it. So number 10, romantic idealization. People who idealize relationships or hold overly romantic notions about love and what relationships are supposed to be may develop fear of abandonment because they expect their relationship to fulfill all their needs emotionally and otherwise. And that's simply not realistic. So they simply expect too much out of the relationship. When reality doesn't match their expectations, they fear that the relationship is failing and that their partner is unhappy and will leave them. Sadly, fear of abandonment underneath jealousy and jealousy often leads to behaviors that unintentionally push a partner away such as being overly possessive, clingy, demanding constant reassurance, testing their, commit, testing their partner's commitment, setting limitations on what their partner can do, um, all those things, anger, um, the fights, all those drive the partner away. So jealousy and the fear of abandonment become a self-fulfilling prophecy, prophecy when the partner leaves and now you are abandoned. This creates a cycle um, where the fear of abandonment actually contributes to the relationship's demise. Pretty sad. So what can be done about jealousy that stems from fear of abandonment? If you are the jealous type, you first must acknowledge your feelings and take responsibility for them. It's not the other person's fault that you are jealous. Whatever they're doing, even if they're doing something bad, jealousy may not be the best response to address the other person's behavior. You must understand that you are seeing your partner and their behavior through and your relationship through a very distorted lens. Then you must identify the root cause of your fear of abandonment. This may take a little while, but every little bit of insight and trying does help. Um, you might have to work on that for a while. You might have to enlist the help of a professional. Reflect on what usually triggers your jealousy. That will really, really help you. 
um, you can monitor yourself. So if this happens, then I feel jealous. If that happens, then I feel anxious. If this happens, then this. So you kind of figure out what the triggers are. Once you know the triggers, you can have an open conversation, open and honest conversation about this with your therapist and your partner or both in the same room or separately. And then you can explain yourself so they can understand you better, especially your partner needs to understand you better. Also identify um, the behaviors you favor when you feel jealous. Are you the angry type? Are you the stonewaller? Are you the blamer? Do you throw things across the room? Like, do you slam the doors? Uh, do you pick a fight? What do you do when you feel jealous? Ask yourself, ask yourself, how is this behavior serving me? What is the benefit of this behavior? And then... You can think of, is there another way I can get to the same place? So I don't break the dishes, I don't piss off my partner, and I don't come out crazy. So whatever the behavior that you have, what is it providing you with? Can you get it another way? Once you figure out what you think the benefit is, you have to figure out what the benefit is. Are you getting the person's attention? Are you feeling loved? Are you feeling empowered? What's the benefit you're getting? Can you get it another way? Perhaps instead of yelling at your partner and accusing them, ask for a hug and tell them you feel uneasy and need their, and tell them that you need their reassurance or they you need their attention. What can you do? to build self-esteem. If fear of abandonment comes from low self-esteem, what can you do to build self-esteem? So think about where do you feel the weakest and start there. So is it a body image? Is it a career thing? You're not as far as you can go in your job. What is it that's kind of a sore point? And you can start addressing this. So these are actionable things. You can actually do something about your body image like, uh, you can work out, you can change your diet, you can change the way you see yourself. <laughs> also remind yourself of your positive qualities and what your partner, what your partner appreciates about you from their perspective. If you don't know, you just ask him, hey, what do you appreciate about me? Like, why are you with me? Like, what do you see in me that um, makes you love me? And so remind yourself of your positive qualities when you're in a low place. Um, when you notice jealousy, jealous thoughts creeping in, challenge them. Ask yourself, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Or am I understanding what I'm seeing properly? Or am I exaggerating, inflating, um, jumping to conclusions? So challenge your own jealous thoughts and see how that goes. Ask yourself if there's real evidence for your fears or if your mind is just telling stories that, you know, trigger your old wounds. If you're on the receiving end of jealousy, just leave. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. If the person is very important to you, the relationship is very important to you, work with the person to help them feel seen, loved, and valued. That will immediately distinguish their jealousy, immediately distinguish their fear of abandonment. Positive reinforcement and showing your gratitude go a long way. So dish out the compliments and never miss an opportunity to tell them you appreciate them for something they do, for some, for for the way they are. Maybe you love their sense of humor. Maybe they're always there for you. Let them know again and again and again. It's reassurance to them. Um, you too must communicate openly and honestly, and be upfront and reassuring when it comes to possibly triggering your partner so if um they get nervous when you disappear without telling them where you're going well hell what does it cost you to just tell them where you're going before you go so they know where you are and they don't have to worry about you 
leaving them unexpectedly. Check in throughout the day with text messages. Um, little nice things for, for your partner so that, you know, let them, let them know ahead of time your plans, um, your thoughts. So you don't inadvertently trigger their anxiety, fear of abandonment and jealousy. It's just a nice thing to do for both of you. You save yourself a lot of trouble. The two of you together can come up with ways to work with the issues at hand, ways that work for both of you. So obviously communication, honesty, openness, willingness to uh, not be right or wrong, but more like a team. Let's figure this out and help each other out. As you build more trust in the relationship, all that communicating, all that working with each other and helping each other builds more trust in the relationship. And as you build more trust in the relationship, your partner will be less jealous. You are less likely to trigger their fear of abandonment. And there will be a lot less fights, a lot fewer misunderstanding. And you all feel great <laughs> compared to otherwise. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification button. Thank you for getting this far in the video.